my studio. I'm Jessie and this is the Knit Up and Die podcast, episode 34, Making Progress Where You Can. I had big plans for this week. I had big plans for last weekend and unfortunately things never go quite as I plan. Um, so I didn't get the progress done that I thought I was going to get done, but I did get progress done and as long as we're moving ahead, we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, right? So, um, to begin with, I had been gung-ho working really, really well on my uh, How to Eat an Elephant Blanket. And I did like two squares a night last week and thought I was doing wonderful. Um, this week, it didn't work out quite that way. So I didn't get the progress done that I expected to get done. I did still get, uh, looks like... I did three or maybe four, I did I think three more squares on this. Not a lot, not what I had hoped to do, but it's progress and that's what matters. Um, I did get to add my, I think I showed you guys this, I did get to add the little swatch from the yarn that I dyed in the um, podcast opening sequence and I'm really proud to have that in there because this podcast means a lot to me, you mean a lot to me. And every time I look at this and I see this vibrant square, I think of this. And I did, so I did get two, I think two just squares done this week. Which is not a lot and puts me back into the 59 years to complete the project kind of arena. But I'm aware I did make excellent progress the week before and I I think I reasonably can get this row done this week. So that's my goal. It's a small goal. It is only four squares, but I think that's attainable and little bites go a long way. This is the how to eat an elephant blanket and the answer to that question is always one bite at a time. So keeping the mindset right, keeping the mindset right. You don't have to accomplish everything overnight, although I'm quite sure that that's how I'm hardwired to think that way. I'm trying to make progress with myself. I had also been making incredible progress on my Curiosity Scarf. It is a project that I'm knitting for my mom. Um, I love it. I have done this pattern before. Barbara Benson is the genius behind this pattern. And it is a nice long tapered scarf design that has some stockinette and some garter sections in it. Um, very clever, very easy, easy to memorize, easy to read. You can see exactly where you are. And it grows from a tiny little point here, and it grows and grows and grows and grows. It's one of those patterns that you can basically knit your entire ball off and be done. Um, and this particular yarn, I've, I've talked about this before, this is the Knit Picks Chroma Fingering in sandstone. I'm trying to hold it up so you can see the colors. I had been unsure about the colors just because I thought there was kind of a purple in there. That purple turns out to be much more of a, a pale mauve. It's nowhere near as stark or vibrant a purple as I thought it was. And I'm liking it. I, I am liking the project. I am liking the colors. Um, last week I showed you that I had done progress from here to here. There are my progress markers here to here. And I was very excited. I put this progress marker in thinking I was going to have big things to show you this week. And I don't. I don't. Um, I have from here to here to show you this week about four and a half inches of progress. Because Monday I was working on this and I don't know, the radio was on, and John was driving, he drives our morning commute so I can knit, and this is one of those projects that I can actually knit in the car, I don't even have to really think about it, which may be the problem. <laughs> and I looked down at it and I realized I'd done the wrong increase at the wrong time. And I thought, it's an increase, nobody will ever notice. No big deal. It'll be fine. 
and so I kept knitting because I really thought that the accompanying mirroring increase later would just kind of eat it up and hide it and everything was going to be fun. Not so. <laughs> I took my lunch break later and was sitting out in the garden knitting away on this thinking everything was good and I did that mirrored increase on the other side and looked at it and went yeah, no, <laughs> no. My OCD kicked in. I looked at that and I just determined I could see it. And that's what mattered to me was I could see that it was wrong. And I know, I know you've heard it from me before. Nothing in knitting is wrong. <laughs> it's just different. Um, and I agree, I agree. I did it differently. I didn't follow. I, I, I did it wrong. <laughs> I did it wrong. I, I did the wrong thing at the wrong time. I did it different from the pattern. However, when you're going to do something different from the pattern, the trick is to do that very, very early on and to be consistent throughout the rest of the project with it. And this is about dead in the middle of the project that I decided to do it differently. So uh, that just, that wasn't going to work for me. And so this went into timeout for corrective action. And um, I, I knew I could readily correct it. I knew that I could just drop down those couple of stitches and take out what was there, move it over, put what was supposed to be there in. And I did, I did, but I didn't do that until <laughs> this morning. So since Tuesday, this has been just camping. This has been stalled hard. I did do the drop down. I did do the correction. I'm very happy with the correction. It looks good. It looks the way it's supposed to, mostly. Let me check. Yeah, it looks good. Um, and any of the loosey-goosey that happened in doing the correction is going to write itself when I block this. So no one will ever be the wiser except you and me. Shh. <laughs> I did it differently midway. Um, I, I love this. I love this. I'm not sure where my head went wrong and why I suddenly decided that left was right and right was wrong. Um, I suspect it may have been because the radio was on and there was political news going on and I know better than to knit and I never knit and mix politics um, because sooner or later something will get under your skin and it will get into your knitting. If you're going to have the radio on, the TV on, make it something lovely. <laughs> Anywho, so that was camping. It has been rectified. It is back into full circulation and I will look at that later and get going on that again. Um, I think it's going to go right back into my commute time. However, <laughs> I spoke last week about having projects on deck. Um, I really, I need to have a project with me. I, I need to have a project with me because I never know when I'm going to get hung up somewhere where there's going to be a wait and I get fidgety and I can be a very, very patient person, but I'm ever so much more patient when I have knitting with me. And so I did, I, I prepped up a project. I made sure that I had a project on deck that I could grab and go, so that I didn't burn time running in circles, you know, panic, 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 I don't have knitting, I need to find something. Um, and I did have a project ready to roll, which I grabbed and got right to work on. So Wednesday in the car, I cast on socks for my husband, which I had spoken about wanting to do. And I'm really excited about these. This yarn, let me show you this yarn, I, this is just lovely. I've had this for a little while now, um, hidden away in my stash. I have such a beautiful stash of her yarns. This is, as always, Supernatural Yarns. I'm hoping that you can see this. I'm showing you the cake. I'm sorry, I don't have the skein to show you. Obviously, I've caked it already. Um, this is Supernatural Yarns. The color is, they're screwing with the wrong people. 
Uh, this is on her Sprite sock base. It's 100% superwash merino. It's a four ply, 100 grams, 438 yards. It is part of her Walking Dead series, and I love it. This color is just stunning. It has um, pale denim jeans. It has, sorry, it's zombies, dried blood. <laughs> it has uh, asphalt. It has uh, some rusty kind of browns in there. It's really quite lovely. It's really lovely. And because it is a hand dye, because of the way she applies it, it is spiraling gorgeously on this sock. I'm going to hold this up and hope that you can see this just like that. Isn't that lovely? It makes these pretty little stripes that just spiral right around the sock. I'm referring to this as my dark hero socks, as it was my hero and saved me from my stress plight with the other knitting. Um, also, they're from my husband. He's my hero. Uh, and the colors just remind me of, like, the antithesis of Superman. I, I want to say back in the cartoons uh, at the, the Justice League or... Maybe it was one of the early Superman movies. I honestly don't remember. I, I'm not that big a Superman hero kind of fan. But I want to say that he had like his, his alter ego show up and he was in like a really dark version of his costume. Anyway, the colors make me think that way and I love it. Um, yes, this looks like a tiny little tube and you're going, is your husband? made of paper. <laughs> he's a very skinny man. He is a very skinny man. However, um, because he's skinny and because he's tried on socks, wool socks before and got nervous about their rebound and how they have a tendency, the ribbing has a tendency to stretch out and not hold so well after time, he wanted something that had some elasticity to it. And so, wisely, I went shopping and I found Elastic Madeira. It's made in Germany. It is knit in elastic thread. It prevents sagging and it's fabulous. It's fabulous. Let's see if I can free it here. Um, I got this at Nancy's Notions online. She is wonderful. Their customer service is amazing. Amazing. I had placed an order with them. Um, I knew straight up that it was back ordered. Not a problem. Let me know. We're good. Uh, they sent the order, everything came perfect in time. Then I received a phone call from them. Apparently there had been an issue with fulfillment on one of the items that I ordered where a piece of the total product had been missing from the shipments. They personally called me to make sure that I received everything in that shipment. I love them. I love them. I had received everything. Everything was wonderful. But they took the time to stop and call me to make sure that I get everything. Not just assume, not wait until I finally give up and call. They called everybody that had ordered that product to make sure everybody got the right thing. That is above and beyond customer service. Nancy's Notions online. If you were ever watching PBS, uh, she had a wonderful sewing quilting show. I don't know if she's still doing it. She might be. Loved her. Loved her. Um, probably... Uh, she inspired quilts. They didn't go well, but she inspired them. <laughs> I, I did try very hard. Anyway, uh, this is among the products that she sells. She doesn't generally sell knitting materials, but this elastic they use it for all kinds of stuff and it is the finest thread of elastic you probably can't even see it let's see if I can block myself and you probably can't see it it is like spider webbing it is wonderful and stretchy but it holds really really well um, you just carry it along with your your regular sock thread and knit it right in it goes in basically invisibly. I can see it in a couple places, but as soon as I wiggle my work around, it tucks right in and you don't even see it anymore. And it has got rebound on it. I can stretch this out to regular sock size and it plunks right back in. I like this. Um, I'm a little nervous that this might be tighter than he's looking for. 
I really only want to do the very top of it. He's got skinny angles, what can I say? Um, and then I want to actually do an expand on the top of the foot because he, like me, has a very high arch. So I do want to expand out a little bit before we get to the heel gusset, uh, just to give him that extra space. So anyway, as, as my pinch hitter, my dark hero socks went on, um, and I, I will put a link to Nancy's Notions and the name of the product in my show notes as well, so that if you're interested, if part of the reason you're not doing socks is they're saggy or you would like extra elasticity, you can find out about this. Um, I want to say it says 200 meters, I, which I can't remember the conversion, how many yards that is, but certainly one spool of this is more than enough to do the tops of two pairs of socks. And I've got like four inches here. You could probably do the whole leg uh, on each sock. Two pairs. Did I say two pairs? I meant two socks. Anyway, um, good product. We like that product. So I made progress. Not on what I wanted to, but progress was made nonetheless. Um, I'm cheating. I'm reading my show notes here on the side as well because there was all kinds of things I wanted to talk to you about. Um, I had also promised you last week that I was going to use my brand new Addy Click interchangeable set on my Curiosity. I knew there was a reason I hadn't changed needles over on yet. I kept thinking it was because I was forgetting to do it. But when I stopped immediately after podcasting last time and I went and I grabbed my clicks and went through them to swap out, I discovered that that's because that set, for some reason, doesn't include that needle size. No big whoop. There will be another project in the very near future, I'm quite sure, that will use one of those Addy Click needles and I will be able to test them out for you and talk about them because I need another project. I'm not surrounded by blankets and sweaters. Shh, or that's as far as that conversation's going. I didn't even look at it. I didn't even look at it this week. I meant to. It's been a hectic, busy week um, and clearly full of knitting trauma. Um, but I, I've got projects, so why do I need another project? Because I'm inspired. And so, yeah, I know, <laughs> it's another project. This actually is a new design. And I uh, have really, I've only worked on it two nights now. It is a fast, easy knit. It is inspired by uh, a knitter that I know who just struggles with a couple of stitches and has a preferred way to work and I wanted to design something that fit into her repertoire, was easy for her, was enjoyable, was useful, uh, and had a fun look to it. But I also wanted to keep in mind everybody else's plight. <laughs> we all have too much yarn, or so we think. I, I honestly don't think you can have too No, you can have too much yarn. Now that I think of it, I know a few people that have too much yarn and I feel for them because there comes a point when you have too much yarn where you feel overwhelmed and you start to judge yourself because you have all these beautiful blobs of potential and you want to make beautiful things with them but when you look at the overwhelming mountain of potential suddenly it seems impossible and one beautiful thing, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> pardon me, barely chips away at that mountain, it kind of devalues the beautiful thing. This is vulnerability and guilt and shame and all those wonderful things that make us who we really are. And there's nothing wrong with collecting beautiful yarns. There's nothing wrong with enjoying only the potential of them, even if you don't get to work with them. There's something wrong with feeling shame and giving yourself shame. 
You shouldn't be shaming yourself. And I want to enable people to make good, to, to grab a couple of beautiful skeins of yarn and do something wonderful with it and have it be quick and easy and fulfilling, that instant gratification kind of project. And that's really what this baby is. I talked a little bit that I had this new design coming up and uh, here it is. It's in process. And to, to help with even my own excessive stash, I determined I wanted to do this in fingering weights and I wanted to do it with two held together. And so I did. And it is on, ha 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 ha, my Addy Clicks, like I promised. And I love them. I love them. I don't even notice the join. I, I work right along, and this is with two yarns held together, which can be a little bit fiddly, and if something's going to get stuck, this is the time it's going to get stuck. Don't even notice the join. Have not had any problems with them falling off. As far as I'm concerned, it's, it's a fixed circular until I actually choose to remove the tips. Um, cable, of course, it's Addy. The Addy cables are flexible and lovely. I enjoy them. Um, the tips are perfect for me. I generally gravitate towards a sharper tip. These tips have an interesting thing about them. They're not a stiff triangle. They're parabolic. And I'm, I'm trying to show you with my hands. Maybe it'd be easier if I showed you with my arms. They're not a stiff triangle. They're a parabolic kind of curve. That curve means that there's a slightly rounded but still sharp tip. And instead of it going straight off the tip in a direct triangular line, it curves in just ever so slightly before it tapers all the way out. So it's not a true tight angle. It's got a little bit of a spooning, if you will, at the very tip. That makes these so fun, so easy, so fast. I love them. I love them. Never mind that they warm right to your touch and they're very lightweight. So, yes, the Addy Click interchangeable set is a success. This is the beginning of Addicted to You. Addicted to You is a simple cast on tiny number and it grows, but it grows in saw teeth and has a bind off. There's a little bit of open work in there. And it grows, and it grows, and it grows. And this will look so much better when it's blocked. In the meantime, my tips are curling. That'll come out when I block it. And it can grow infinitely. I have not fully hashed out this design. So, Part of me loves that it's just growing infinitely, forever. Part of me thinks that might get to be a lot around somebody's neck. It's right about now where I would like it for a scarf. But do I want to end with just a scarf or do I want this to be a magnificent shawly wrap? It's really about how I would wear it how I think others would wear it, and that's in the consideration. This would obviously be more of a hanging tail, and it looks good. I like it. It's now we're up to the wrapping stage, and I'm concerned about how much more it'll grow before it could get all the way around my neck and then have a long hanging end. And that hanging end, being a foot wide, would be aggressive. I'm tempted to... Put on a couple more saw teeth and then see if I want to either taper back down or have it leverage out and just stay straight. Otherwise, I'm loving it. Um, part of the design process, and I said I wanted to talk to you guys about this as I work through this, is you have an idea. I have an idea. I want this long tapering scarf and I want very strict criteria about the stitches that are used in it so that it works well for um, my intended knitters. And with every design, you have to have wiggle room. You have to recognize that things take on a life of their own, things gain a voice, 
things will talk back to you, things will tell you what they want to do, and you have to be flexible. And I'm right there at that stage where I'm being flexible, where I'm looking at it and I'm reevaluating the overall product and determining if this is the direction I truly want to go in or if I want to make modifications to it. Um, I'm going to keep plugging. I, I'm going to toy with this some more. Anywho, the point of it is, I made progress. This is just two evenings of knitting. It goes super fast. It goes really, really fast. The stitches involved in this are quite literally knit, yarn over, knit two together, bind off. We're talking simple. And it's easy to figure out where you are. It's easy to count it off. It is garter, so it stretches, and when you wrap it around, boop, it's going to have that extra tooth to it so that it stays in place. Um, garter likes to hold itself kind of like vet wrap. That sounds really wrong. I wouldn't dress myself in vet wrap, but it has a tendency with that added texture to stay in place rather than slip against itself and be one of those scarves you're constantly nodding or having to grab or adjust or whatever. So, what am I making it out of? Well, I said that I wanted this to be a stash buster. Um, like I said, you would grab two skeins of fingering weight that you just felt like were the perfect complement, were the perfect contrast, made a fun noise together, whatever you want. This is where the creativity really kicks in, is you get to use up two skeins of your sock yarn that are languishing somewhere, that just look gorgeous together and you couldn't figure out how to make them gorgeous together, gorgeous together. Um, this is that marling where you just hold two together and go for it. I was thinking I wanted to use up my stash, but of course somebody had a sale. I know, I am just a glutton for punishment. <laughs> um, those sales, you know. I, the, it's not adding to my stash, it's immediately being used and therefore I, I'm not adding to my problem. Notice I named it Addicted to You, that would be to T-W-O uh, because it uses two. And again, I went with uh, Shannon over at Supernatural Yarns, you're an evil woman. Uh, she had a sale, <laughs> she had a sale. I have two different skeins of yarn. This beautiful uh, orchid purples and browns also has in it the uh, nylon little bumps, the puffs. I love it. I love it. I didn't think I was going to. I've looked at these textured yarns before. I've never bought this base before that has those little nubs in it every once in a while. And I, on a whim, because it was on sale and because... It's Shannon and her colors are gorgeous. I bought a skein of it. This is Glad Rags Wizard Wear. Follows her Harry Potter themes. And it is on her Zombie BFL. Yes, that's 85% Superwash, Blue Face Leicester, and 15% of those nylon puffs. It's a two ply, it's 100 grams, it's 438 yards. I hope the camera sees these colors for you. It's just lovely. Of course, it's all caked up. I'm sorry I don't have a picture of this skein because I just took it out of the envelope and wound it. <laughs> also, as a compliment to that, is this. It's so much darker. It's so beautiful. This is Spiderwort, again, part of her Harry Potter uh, themed colorways. This is on her Kelpie sock base. It's 100% super wash merino. Again, it's a two ply, 490 yards over 100 grams. And it is this lovely dark purple. It's an eggplant with variations in it. I love it. I love it. And the two together. I expected the project to come out darker. When I look at these two together, my eye is dominated by the gravity of the dark color, and I thought that the light color and the little nooks would just highlight it. 
And what you get instead is this, whoops, I'm throwing stuff around here. What you get instead is this lovely marriage between the two. I love it. I love it. I'm very happy with it. I like the eggplant color in it. I like the lighter colors. I like the rustic oatmeal-y feel that these little nylon blips are putting in. And I like how understated they are when you do the two held together. It doesn't become snaggy. It doesn't become fluffy. It doesn't look like carpet. <laughs> It, these are like the extreme, if you had tons of this little fluffy noop thing in there, um, it, it presumably could look that way. I'm not getting that in this fabric. I'm getting little tiny plufs of it every once in a while. I'm trying to hold it up in such a way that you can see, and I'm not sure that the camera is going to give you that texture. It's really something you have to experience yourself. But the only way, that the only texture I can think of to describe it is to say it's kind of like oatmeal. There's something warm, there's something soothing, but there's that hint of rustic in there. Um, I, I like it. I really like it. I would, I would buy that again. Um, I don't know that it's a base that I would bring in. I, I simply haven't experienced it enough to determine that yet. But... I, I really like the, the base. I really like the yarn. I, I, it's Shannon's yarns. Her yarns are gorgeous. Uh, so this is it. This is where we're going. This is Addicted to You. Again, garter stitch. So we're only knitting. We're doing yarn overs. We're doing knit two togethers. And we're binding off to get this cool sawtooth edge here. And it's not a big sawtooth edge, but just a little bit all the way up the end there. And I'm still toying with the overall end shape. And progress grows. So, that was exciting this week. I, I feel very much that I'm headed in a good direction. Um, for those test knitters out there ever so patiently waiting on me, thank you <laughs> for your patience. Um, I have the two hat patterns that I've been working on for you. They are very complementary to each other. One of them is Order of the Phoenix. The other one is Dumbledore's Army. And one is a higher texture version of the other. One of them is teched. It's edited. It's ready to go. I promised that I was going to give my test knitters both of them at the same time. And that's what's holding up at this point. The final edits have come in for Dumbledore's Army. I'm getting those entered. I'm looking over at my computer. I'm getting those entered, edited, updated into my actual pattern point today. And I'll contact you guys with the patterns. Yes. Um, the If you are interested in testing these hat patterns, contact me. I have not shut this out. You're welcome to join the test knitters group. Um, and I'm, I'm also looking at ways that we can interact as a whole group uh, together. Uh, a place that I can get your information, I can query all of you at once. And I'm not sure if I want to do that on Ravelry or whether I want to do that out in like one of the Google form group kind of places. Um, I am going to do a little bit more research on that and see where we want to go. Certainly you don't have to contact me that way. You're welcome to email me. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of looking for a place where we can all sort of touch base, hang out. It may just happen over in the Jesse Knits group um, on Ravelry in the meantime until I can gather together a better forum. Um, but certainly, if you're interested, get in on it. I'm going to send out both patterns to the test knitters, and you get to choose to knit one, the other, or both. Entirely up to you, whatever tickles your fancy. And give me some feedback. And I, I have noise, excuse me. What? Are you sure? My friend has something he wants to show me, apparently.
Are you sure? That's just a little dangerous. Do you know what you know? Do you know what you're doing? All right, have at it. Apparently, Stitch has decided he wants to do some stitching. I'm a little bit concerned. He has really long needles and a giant ball of yarn that's bigger than him. We'll see what happens here. Um, moving on. Uh, it's really scary when livestock grabs needles. Um, so, uh, the, the sale. The sale is still going on. Again, right through to the end of the month, it is my celebration sale. It means that my business, Die Monkey Yarns, has been two years running now. Um, and I do a big month-long sale, well, every year. <laughs> I did one last year. I'm doing one this year. 35% off. The coupon code is MADNESS35. Stocks are starting to dwindle in certain colorways, so if you're eyeing something, hop on over, get it. It's a great deal. I don't discount again this deep for the rest of the year. Um, and I do still have the giveaway happening over on Instagram. I'll insert the footage again of the giveaway prize. Look at this amazing giveaway. So this is by Donna at Knitting with Attitude. This lovely project bag has got a nice pocket inside and is plenty big enough to hold multiple skeins. We also have a DPN holder. I'm not going to take it out of the package. She sealed it so beautifully with her logo. She has given us a progress keeper. Lovely little heart silver. Isn't that cute? We also have a collection of stitch markers from her, also little hearts. Looks like we've got five of these all on her card. They're so cute. I love them. And then I'm throwing in two skeins of Tap Monkey yarn. That's 75% Superwash Merino, 25% nylon, 100 grams, 463 yards each. I've got my Amethyst colorway as well as my Drusilla colorway. What a great prize. Get in. Get on to Instagram. Sign up and put yourself down to win this wonderful, wonderful giveaway. It's fabulous. I love it. Uh, very generous. Donna, again, thank you so much for participating and sending those amazing products for us. Um, hop on over to Instagram. Take a look at the Dye Monkey Yarns uh, profile over there. That's me and you will see exactly that product as you just saw in the video. Click on it, that's where you can enter. There's been a bunch of entries. I, you should see the spreadsheet. I can hardly keep up. It's turning into a full-time job. There's over, I think my last count was 1,800 entries. It's gonna be a trick. Um, so certainly get on over there, do your entries, and put in. Your, your chance of winning is as good as anybody else's, so I, I highly encourage it. It's a fabulous prize. Um, and, ha 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 ha, I'm going to have a podcast only giveaway. That's right, that's for you. Um, so there's this fabulous prize over on Instagram. Certainly go and enter, put in to try and win that. But this is a much smaller forum. There aren't a whole lot of you that watch me. And I really want to honor you. I really want to honor you. This means the world to me. The fact that you take time out of your day and you sit and you watch this crazy lady and her wackadoodle sheep run around and ask me your questions and let me show you techniques and take time to contact me means the world to me. I love you. And I really want to do a special giveaway that's only for you guys. So you have to watch in order to win because I'm going to draw the name of the winner the last weekend of the month when I do the drawing for the um, Instagram giveaway. Thank you. My mind is starting to wander. It's going to be two giveaways in that episode. That is the next weekend, if I remember correctly. Sorry, I haven't got a calendar right here to look at. Um, but I think that gives you trying to do the math in my head. I think it gives you two weeks. I, I will enter the information here because clearly my head's not in the right place. It, it's the weekend. I don't worry about what day of the week it is until I have to go back to work. Anyway, um, so this one's really going to be about sharing. 
And I want you all to please certainly like, subscribe, um, share my video with like-minded knitters. I appreciate that and it helps me build my brand as well as helps me help other people. But what I'd like you to do is just down in the comments share any one thing from any of my episodes that helped you or meant something to you, any comment will do. If you would also pop over to Dye Monkey Yarns at Etsy and tell me what your favorite colorway is. I'm saving time on the winner's end. You're likely to win that skein or something very close to it. What's going to happen is you go ahead, you make the comment at the bottom down here. No matter what platform you're watching this on, if you're watching it from the Ravelry insert that I do, you're watching it on my Blogspot uh, insert that I do there, or you're watching it on YouTube, just make a comment under the video. Tell me those things. When I do the drawing, it will be random. I will pull all of your names together with all of your comments. I'll put it on a single spreadsheet. Doing that alone is going to be random, but then I'll use the random number generator. If there are 10 entries, there will be one prize. If there are 20 entries, there will be two prizes. And if there are 30 entries, there will be three prizes. Those prizes will be yarn. We like yarn. You're going to get a fancy dancy vinyl decal of the dancing monkey. You're going to get one of the commemorative Die Monkey stitch markers. These are commemorative. They are custom made each year. Uh, I have them specifically done. These monkeys, they're tiny, aren't they adorable? Are holding two skeins of yarn to commemorate the second anniversary. You'll get one of these custom ones. Did I have that in screen? There you go. And there are books. First one to reply after I announce the winners gets to choose which one they want. I have Celtic Cables and Color Work. This is an Interweave by Martin Story. Interweave publications are fabulous. The photography is always amazing. We have Knitting the Chill Away. This is a Martingale publication, also a beautiful publication. 39 Cozy Patterns. There are some beautiful things in here. And finally, a book by Fiona Ellis, Inspired by the Elements. This is Inspired Fair Isle Knits. Fiona Ellis, she's brilliant. So just to recap how this is going to work, if 10 of you enter, pardon me, if 10 of you enter, I will be giving away one prize. I'll be drawing for one prize. If 20 of you enter, I'll be drawing for two. If 30 or more enter, I'll be drawing for three. First person to respond, once I've drawn the names of the winners, will get their choice of books. You will get the stitch markers, you will get a vinyl sticker, and you will get a yarn of your choice from my shop. You have to watch to know if you won. Sorry guys, it's specific to this. And certainly if you have friends out there that you know would love this, share the podcast with them. It means the world to me. And thank you. I appreciate every one of you. I, I cannot believe the number of subscribers I have. I cannot believe during the week when I get those pop-up messages that Jillian has subscribed to you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what an endorsement. What a wonderful thing that not only did you watch me, but you determined that you'd like to keep watching me. There aren't words for that. That means so much to me. And the messages I get from you guys, um, I, I received a wonderful message from Nancy. She was working on a sweater. She said that she has been knitting since fourth grade. I think that's what she told me. She's been knitting since she was in fourth grade. And she, her one thing that she just hated was picking up stitches to do edgings and stuff. And 
she commented that she had gotten to the collar on a sweater and she kind of put it off and was fussy about it. She didn't really want to do it because she hates picking up stitches. And she sat down and she started to do it and was getting all frustrated with it. I, I'm sorry, I'm trying to remember her email. And, and Nancy, if I'm destroying this for you, please, my apologies. Thank you for letting me talk about this on, on the podcast. But she said that all of a sudden she remembered that I had demonstrated picking up stitches. So she went back to that episode, sat there, watched the video real quick, went back, and she said that this pickup around the collar was the best pickup she'd ever had, and that it looked seamless, and it just went right on through and did the collar of the sweater. Thank you! I'm so thrilled that my demonstration worked for you. And the fact that you came back to me and let me know that it worked for you, Nancy, thank you so much. That meant the world to me to know that I had taken something that was a lifelong problem for you away and, and made your knitting experience better. That's that's fabulous. Thank you. Um, your mail means everything to me. Certainly, if you just want to say hi, pop me a line. Thank you. I've had some wonderful hello messages this week. If you have questions, if you want to know what that book is, um, contact me. I, that's why I'm here. Um, so, what else do I have? I think that's about it. Uh, excuse me, just one moment. Thank you, sorry, that was the phone call I was waiting for. Oh, no. What have you done? You're, you've got one in your ear. Do you need help? Let's go work on your knitting. I'm going to go rescue my friend. I will see you all next week. Make it a great one. Bye.